For me, I can't really ever separate people from environment, whether it's environment man-made or environment natural. And so if, what I've got is I've got a bit of a scattering of emotions connected with the part of the Canning River that I'm hooked into because of the conservation group I'm part of, but also um, then looked at, and I suppose thinking particularly what Ezra said earlier about some of the lessons I have learnt um, in working with community groups and people with regard to being doing things even better, I suppose, on the foreshore. So... Some of these, it's been interesting during today for me hearing these come up. So some of these are really repeats you're going to find of what other people have said. This just gives you a bit of a picture of where the little dotted line is. The part of the Canning River we're on is the southern side and from um, Bull Creek running down and around to the Shelley Bridge, so the bridge that goes across um, Leach Highway there. So for me, I think about some of the emotions of empathy and that's um, empathy from the warden for his charges as they toil to build a river channel in the days of the convict fence. And you might know there's this convict fence running across that part of the river and what it was was it was actually building a channel so that the barges could come down. And these convicts, I understand, were actually up to their waists or up to their armpits in water, digging out and throwing the sand over the other side so they could create this um, barrier. The water, they, they got so exhausted they asked if they could actually swap their backy ration and have some more food. And their warden actually stood up for them and he said, no, they need their backy ration, that's really important, but they also need more food. So they've got, a double back, they've got their backy and double food. So some empathy there. Um, another one is satisfaction. As the engineering challenges have been overcome and the new suburb is now up for sale, the landscape transformed for the market drivers of the day. So people got more river views and they filled in um, what they considered swampy lands but were the wetlands in that area. But there was great satisfaction by those people. The pure delight that many of us know is the dolphins carouse and it brings foot traffic to a standstill in Shelley and Rossmoyne igniting conversations with strangers. These barriers are broken down between people who often just nod to each other, but they actually stop and talk. It's fantastic. Another thing is the amazement, the amazement as feeding frenzies unfold. What's this bizarre phenomenon and does anyone know but this incredible scene of all of the the um, cormorants and the pelicans and other birds actually sweeping down the river in these great feeding frenzies, chasing the, chasing the fish. And sometimes the dolphins join them as well. Um, sorrow, that sorrow of grieving families as they seek the river to soothe their loss, and some have chosen park benches to dedicate to their, lo their loved ones. And then we've talked a bit about this exhilaration, this testosterone-charged exhilaration of the first drinks on the foreshore reserves with mates away from the floodlights and away from parents' prying eyes. And there's also the flip of that of some of the locals who are quite fearful at times of some of these young kids having a good time in the park. The other one, we someone else talked about, that sort of arousal, the emotion of arousal of thinking about the first park up in a darkened area along some foreshore. And we still see that today. Um, Anger and helplessness. For me, this one was when the tree vandalism sign is erected accusingly opposite your home as you're in line of sight of the destruction and now you're tarred. And that's happened for a couple who have been very actively involved in our group for many years. And someone near them has done the, the cutting down of the trees, but the sign's gone directly opposite their home. They're very distraught. Um, then there's the other side of um, depression as the clouds move in and the mood of the river is darkened and it has this direct tug on the shutters of an old lady's heart that I know. The minute the river changes or the, her mood totally changes, yet she's still got this amazing outlook. Um, boredom and this boredom as, you, as you're dragged yet again by your school to do community work along the river. You don't want to be there, you want to be somewhere else and, the, and you just yet again have to be dragged down there to do it. Um, outrage. This outrage is my view that I paid for is encroached by the ugliness of nature, supposedly planted to halt some eroding foreshore people keep talking about without my say-so. This amazing ownership that lots of people believe they have, that they've actually paid for the view. Another one is this, um, for me very much with our group, is this, this um, anger that actually morphs into pride um, originally when Creeper started in 1994, it was really started by a couple who were really peeved off with the council. And so for them, they could see they could do something different and get under the skin of the council by having this sort of covering of the environment, like these concerned locals caring for our environment. But interestingly enough, although it started that way, it's really changed and morphed into this fantastic group 
that lots of things it's achieved over the last 18 years and I always think thank God for photos because we never would realise what lots of people have done. This is a few examples of um, near, this one's near Beryl Avenue in um, 1996 on the left through to 2006, just the change that's happened there. And another one um, opposite 183 to 187 Riverton Drive, sort of opposite Salter Point around there. The photo on the left again is 1996 and the photo on the right is about 2007. So again, and it's not until you, and new people join the group too, they don't even realise that this area was totally bare at some stage. Um, the other thing's about disapproval, and it's that thing about um, in an area in Rossmore and Shelley, the, the disapproval from neighbours on Millionaire's Row, like to actually have an environment group and actually to be working to actually be doing stuff with the environment is actually there's a, there's a, a large um, there's a large element of people that disapprove of you doing that and they certainly let you know. Um, one of them a while ago told me that they um, couldn't understand why we're worrying about vegetation on the foreshore because there's so much out near the Nullarbor, we don't need it here. <laughs> but they were concerned. Um, the excitement bit too for if you're in the real estate industry or something like that about, you know, how do you, how do you take advantage? And people talked earlier about um, about real estate values and living on the foreshore and things like that, but all that stuff that captures people, you know, the foreshore location, the riverside suburb, river views, unobstructed views, constantly using that as a tag to pull people in. Um, another one is about the joy, and I suppose here I'm thinking about the joy of pe being part of our community group, and it's that bit about sharing conversations with creeper friends, and there's snippets of lives and thoughts whilst you squat along the foreshore weeding or planting and letting um, the local natives flourish and other things hold the bank. But the other thing is that you start to notice, notice nature more. You're down there crouching around doing stuff, and you start to discover that we've just had um, our three little top left there, our three... Um, our three, do you like that? The world's three um, white-faced herons. There was three bred last year in the one tree and this year there was two, which made it through to adulthood and we still see them round. And down the bottom right was a photo from only last week of, again, the end of a feeding frenzy. They're obviously so fat and full, those grebes, that they're just sitting in a big, um, a big group opposite Salter Point. But there is certainly joy in being in that group. The other thing I was thinking about was exhilaration and that of pitting oneself and one's sailboat against the elements on a Saturday afternoon or finally achieving what the rowing coach has been banging on about for the past four weeks, delivered through his megaphone bright and early in the morning on those crisp mornings. All the pleasure in those reminiscences that people talked about, the freedom of childhood's gone, the bombies off the platform, the canoeing along the edge, the jellyfish fights, the cubbies in the paper barks, parting only when the sun is setting and you're called in for dinner. And then for me, that concern, concern and awe as we try to imagine what it must have been like before Whitefella came and claimed all the best spots. And then I look at some of the things that Whitefella's done since Whitefella's been there and on the right hand side is actually an image of some trees that have been, some mature trees that have been poisoned to um, gain a better view. Another one's about contentedness, delivered by the satisfaction of a belly full of freshly netted and cooked prawns on the banks under the light of the chilly lamps, about kids playing, about balmy evenings and about that sense of um, competition every time you have a drag of the net. Another one is that, this, for me at the moment, and I was talking to Hugh about this, that sort of sadness about the lack of interest that I keep seeing of trying to get younger people into our group. We've got, um, got a fantastic membership, we've got 114 people or families as part of our group, we see about 15 of those actively each week or so doing stuff. We also acknowledge we want membership to be part of the group, but there's this other whole group we never see and we just never seem to attract um, young ones. So I've just been, it's been what I've been focusing on for the while. And another one's about f fulfilment, and I suppose it's that bit about, a bit like the earlier ones, about being part of an extended club. And it doesn't just cross, doesn't not just about being in Shelley or Rossmore, it's, it's about crossing agencies and class systems. It's about being with like-minded people and sharing what works even better for a, for a complex place that we've come to respect and love. And it's that element of that that's... Um, sharing stuff when we go to other workshops and other things that becomes really important and how we bring that back to our group. So I was thinking about it's about ideas and guidance we get from others or we share, it's about the professionalism that we have, it's about volunteer efforts, it's friendships that are developed, it's companionship when working side by side and it's about making a difference for the short foreshore and the community. And then when I think about the lessons, a few lessons I have learned, one is about um, 
letting people connect to areas they identify with. So for our little group, we don't cover a very long area, but we have broken the area into sections and we let people choose which area they want to come to. They can come to all of them if they want to. Um, and that's helped build up connection with that area. We also don't ask too much. So one of the things we've learnt is um, you don't go and do a day's work on the foreshore. You do an hour and you tell people it's an hour and they come along and at the end of the hour it's down tools. You have people arguing with you going, no, 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 we haven't finished it. And you're going, that's fine. If you want to stay behind, that's fine. But other people have kids to take to sport or school or want to go and do some shopping or just, just enough. So an hour's work has been fantastic. Stepping back is another thing that's been really important that sometimes... Um, if you've been involved with a group and you're doing things and people see you as being effective or efficient or whatever, they always feel they can't step in. So it's about how do you pull back and how do you let people um, pull in. I was having a laugh with Susan today because our group doesn't have a secretary at the moment and that's fine. We, we didn't have a president for a year and that's fine too. We said, that's fine, doesn't matter. We'll just stop doing some of the things we used to when we had a president and share the load. So remembering to do things and hopefully people will, um, will step along. Um, the other bit too is about developing working relationships with other, other organisations and agencies and rather than biffing up against people all the time, how, how can you develop those? And for us certainly as an example, a great relationship with the City of Canning and the Environment Section and the Bush Crew and so we work together. So there's phone calls and things and help each other out and do stuff and that's just made such a difference. Um, the other thing is about um, offering support and again I was just talking to Hugh a bit more about that. Um, we've got some roles, as an example, for our group. We're affiliated with other organisations like the Urban Bushland Council and the um, Conservation Council. At the moment, nobody wants to jump in and take our positions with those groups. So it's about how do we invite somebody young and about how they might learn about environment stuff and other things. I was saying I always send students off to talk to Philip Jennings and Professor Philip Jennings and others just so people are aware that if they become involved in Cons Council, they're not going to be tarred forever or lose jobs. People, they're actually lots of incredibly respected people and they'll learn lots there. But how someone like myself who's been on Cons Council, how do I offer support by going with that person? Um, and the other bit for us as a little local group, and it's partly to do with um, living on Millionaire's Row, is um, staying non-political. So as a group, that's something we've actively done. We've, the, within the group, we've got all, all different <laughs> colours and shapes and sizes, but staying non-political so that... Um, that we don't, we don't lose out or don't get tarred by things, but also then using our various networks to do the political stuff. So it might be doing some other work through Conservation Council by providing them with information or doing submissions, but letting them put the submission up, that sort of thing. So how do you, how do you stay with your little local group in the community and keep trying to encourage people? But for me, the two ones would probably be the biggest is um, letting people connect with areas they identify with and don't ask too much. One hour and tools are down. Thank you.